بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أه الحضور غالبيته باللغة العربية اكسكيوز <تصفيق> مي أه ولكن تجهيزه هو باللغة الإنجليزية فسأقرأ فقط التقديم للزملاء الأكارم اليوم في الجلسة باللغة العربية ومن ثم سأنت باللغة الإنجليزية ومن ثم سأنتقل إلى اللغة العربية وأعتذر عن ذلك وأرجو معذرتي في لغتي الركيكة المصدية. We have in this panel we have four speakers, including myself, the fifth speaker. The first speaker is Andrea Andrea Ancilimo, Ancilmo, and in Italian I'm wrong there. Is the founding member and vice president of Meta Group. a premier international investment and advisory group. He has a background as civil engineer and research experience in material science and the sector, university in Connecticut, USA. Andrea has 25 years of experience in, a company, cre in company creation, innovation, support, gain, participating to international assignment and influencing strategic address addresses as member of the board of directors of intermediary organizations, research institutions, business angel networks, and SMEs. He sits at the board of several associations and agencies worldwide. He is the president of ENSME, which is International Network for Small and Medium Entrepreneurship. The final, the second speaker will be Anthony Berry. towards the, the far left. Anthony, founder of Moogly Foundation, a serial entrepreneur and philanthropist, exited from a majority of businesses he started, maintaining minority shareholding in a range of businesses, consultancy, energy, trading, engineering, and industrial services, among, amongst others. founded the Moogly Foundation in 2008, which aims on mentoring entrepreneurs within a system. His, he, his and Moogly beliefs is that these entrepreneurs will make a significant mentor, uh, economic impact that leads to sustainable social development through well-structured mentorship. Also, He has a multicultural international business development. Uh, he, he is a multicultural international business uh, developing entrepreneur, philanthropist, angel investor, focused in the Middle East and the majority of his career as the majority of his career. Myself, Sharif Al Abdul Wahab, is an expert in the field of human resources development as well as teaching English as a second language. By the way, English as a second language is my area of PhD and master's, but not my area of hobby. as, oh, he left, my hobby of practice. Uh, Dr. Al Abdul Wahab has been involved in human resources development and youth enabling programs in the past decade in KSA and USA. With massive country expansion and traditional youth unemployment and a preparation to meet market demands, he beca that became his passion. He worked in several locations, and right now he is a consultant to the TV Technical and Vocational Training Corporation Governor. Prior to that, he was the CEO of the National Entrepreneurship Institute. Finally, Dr. Abdul Oha, PhD, is from Ohio State University in foreign and second language ed, with emphasis in workforce development and education. He earned his Master's of Science in Public Service Administration and another Master's in, of Arts in Teaching English as a Second Language in 1996. In addition to multiple consultations, Dr. Abrahab is a board member of Saudi, uh, Saudi Credit and Saving Bank and the Vice President of the Saudi Squash Federation. Next is Tariq Saadi. Tariq Saadi or Tariq Saadi? Saadi. Saadi. Tariq Saadi. is the managing director of Endeavor Lebanon. Endeavor is a nonprofit organization for economic development focused on supporting outperforming entrepreneurs to create jobs and transform economies. He has extensive experience in venture capital and corporate financing in the Middle East, Europe, and Latin America. Prior to Endeavor, Tarek was co-founder and managing partner of MEVP, a Beirut-based venture capital fund, which invests in early stage opportunities in the Middle East, in addition to tens 
of prior experiences. He earned his Master of Business Administration, then joined Merrill Lynch Mergers and an Acquisition Team in London. Tarek's CV is full of accomplishments that can be read in details in conference website. Last but not least is Yasmin Hassan. And we always save the best for last. Yasmin Hassan is an entrepreneur, is the entrepreneurship manager of Bidaya Center, where she is the responsible for assisting entrepreneurs throughout all stages of their journey from building their business plan, market analysis, acquiring funding, mentorship, and launching the business. Yasmin is responsible for a number of different programs and initiatives under the center, focusing on developing startup startups in Qatar, and works closely with key partnerships. I'm, I'm sorry, key entrepreneurship organizations and educational institutions in Qatar. She is a Shivening Scholar, which is a UK government. By the way, I added that because I didn't know what is Shivening. A scholar, which is a UK government global scholarship program funded by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and partner organizations. Yasmin earned her Master in Science in Internet Company from the University of Surrey in 2003. Now we will start with Andrea. Now in the, in the ecosystem and in the fostering uh, culture of entrepreneurship as has been discussed before. Let's start with Andrea, then we'll move to Anthony. I'll, I'll have myself as the last since I'm the moderator. But can you give us in, uh, in no more than uh, three to four minutes, what's your overview of the ecosystem, the healthy ecosystem of entrepreneurship? Thank you, Sharif. Thank you very much also from, from, for the introduction. Um, you are asking a very tough question huh? um, for two reasons. Huh? First of all, if I have to tell you what is going to be the most effective ecosystem today, huh, I will have just doubts. Uh, we are facing a big transition huh, from the old way of making business to a new way of making business, which is very much connected to dematerialization. And this is asking for a new way of supporting startups. Huh? Just think about makers, uh, 3D makers, or co-working space. Huh? Uh, this means that the way we were used to support startups up until three years ago, uh, maybe it's not going to be extremely effective in the next three years. So for me, just to give a definition of the ingredients, uh, today, today is difficult. But what I know, uh, and this is based on experience, in two things, uh, so we cut down to two minutes. First of all, we need to understand uh, and we need to agree on who our targets are. SMEs and startups are not the same thing. A startup uh, is a company uh, where talented people uh, are just fighting to fight their way. SME is an established company uh, who is still fighting, uh, but is still fighting for different purposes, to win the competition and to win new markets. And if we want to have a supporting ecosystem, both uh, for SMEs and startup, we have to have clear in mind this uh, diversity. Because uh, we are talking to entrepreneurs with different kind of maturity and with different kind of attitudes, and with a different vision, and with a different culture, and with different background, and with different dreams. Second thing, in order to be effective, uh, an ecosystem, and I'm speaking, having in mind my background of working mainly in Europe, in order to be effective, an ecosystem should accept to take risk. Yeah. Sometimes ecosystems, especially the ones which are supported by public budget, they're extremely conscious about being engaged in risky operations. We cannot support entrepreneurs who, by definition, risk. Huh? 
take the risk, uh, a risk their own money, their own reputation. Uh, we cannot support them if we don't share uh, the same feeling to take the risk. So for me, today, the most appropriate ecosystem is an ecosystem, is a, a system uh, where everybody shares the same vision about taking risk, Don't, not being afraid to risk. And most of the ecosystem, this is my experience, failed huh? because we are too much conscious. Not enough prompt or risk ready. Too much conscious and a huge effort to have to be unconscious to be able to succeed. So I will go next with uh, uh, Tony. Uh, and Tony, in, this, in the session today, we are discussing multiple variables, one of which was the ecosystem, which Andrea has put some uh, shed lights on. With, within that, we got entrepreneur supporting activities. And one of those activities are excellent mentorship, which is the weakest link in all over entrepreneurship all over the world because there is no one size fits all or one recipe. So how can you share the, share the, the recipes of the uh, excellent uh, or what's called quality uh, uh, mentorship? So good evening. It's a great pleasure to be here and to share with you two facts. One, I started my first business in Qatar in 1980. And number two, I did all the interior fitting in this hotel under Hyundai as one of my first contracts. So it's a great pleasure to be back here. And since then, I did a further 17 startups. So I have all the scars that we know about about entrepreneurship. But I would like to start by saying, what does a cohesive entrepreneurship ecosystem look like and how can it be balanced? And for this, I need the slide, by the way, wherever he's gone. The first slide, just one slide. Yeah, they don't have the slide. He's going to be searching for it. Can we just exchange to another speaker until we, he gets his sli your slides? So we will we'll go now to the uh, next part, which is the financing of new entrepreneurs' activities. And here I will talk about some of the expertise with Yasmin. And of course, Yasmin, you have been working on such area of Bidaya. And I bet you have the innovation of the ecosystem of the uh, uh, funding and what's called creative funding. Can you share some of, the expert, of, of your expertise within the ecosystem and the funding possibilities? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Um, as mentioned, my name is Yasmin Hassan. I work for a Bidaya Center, which is the Center of Entrepreneurship here in Qatar. And thank you all for still staying here. I know it's five o'clock and everybody wants to go home, but uh, we'll make this a little bit more interactive. If we talk about an ecosystem, and um, for those of you who are currently in Qatar, if you were startups, if you are entrepreneurs, what would you need to set up a business? Yes. I can't hear you, what? What would you need in general to set up a business in Qatar? Capital, money, great, finance. Location, yeah. Okay. Okay, so a lot of that was financing. So you need financing, you need a place to operate from. What else as an entrepreneur, what else would you need? Yes. Now? The know-how, you need the knowledge, you need the information. And somebody said at the back? Idea. An idea. 
OK, so you need a lot of stuff to set up a business. Some of it is financing, some of it is the location, some of it is the information. So if you, you already can see that this is an ecosystem that is needed. We need um, consultants and advisors who are going to help us um, put our idea into a project. We need uh, financiers who are going to help us um, give us money. We need somebody who's going to give us a, a location. Uh, we need a lot of things to set up a business. And I think when it comes to financing, there is like the number one thing that every start, every entrepreneur says, my problem is I cannot set up this business because I do not have the cash. I do not have the money. Uh, and nobody is helping me with the money. Uh, there are banks, and there are banks that can give you loans here in Qatar. Uh, as a startup, and I think for those of you who are here at the beginning, Mr. Abdul Aziz Al Khalifa, who is the CEO of Qatar Development Bank, did mention the uh, initiatives and the programs that they do and how they finance startups through a Zameen program. There are other initiatives which are by Social Development Center, which again finance startups. There is Al Afif and Rasamil, which are specific programs which are here to support entrepreneurs and startups with their ideas. So the financing is, is there. You can also gain financing from friends, from family, from institutions. The financing is there. The question is, and I think is touching upon Mr. Maher Qadura's uh, speech uh, earlier, is, is the passion there? is the passion there. So you can have all of the facilities out there for you. You can have people who are going to invest in you, people who are going to partner with you, people who are going to incubate you. Everything is there. But is that right? Is that the ecosystem that we should be looking at? The most successful businesses in the world were those who made it because they had the passion and they wanted to make it. And it goes back to taking the risks. You know, if I give you a location and I give you the money and I give you the employees and I give you everything that you need, then that's kind of a job. I'm just going to show up, I'm going to open the door and I'm going to have this job. What you need is that you need to work hard. And I think when it comes for startups, the important part of the ecosystem is you and the important part of the ecosystem is the youth. We should have more young people and more initiatives which are led by young people. And that would make, I think, the best ecosystem, especially in Qatar. Thank you. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> that is wonderful. You reminded me of one of the entrepreneurs in Najran. Najran in Saudi Arabia is one of the remote areas by the borders of Yemen. And one of the developing areas that is low income and unemployment is very high. One of the entrepreneurs' seed fund was 300,000 real. 300,000 real, as our colleague here, who started with the UNRWA uh, program for uh, uh, vocational t and training, he reminded us 100,000 real is not enough. We told him, how come you started with, re with the program to start an entrepreneurship in Saudi where 300 is not enough and you put about 600,000 from your pocket? And he said, because you put me on the first step, the second, the third, I could not quit. This is where you... Now the next speaker is Tony. Tony, are you ready or the next one? Then we will go to the to the uh, uh, before the last session here of the first phase, which is Tariq. Tariq, uh, you have been working with Endeavor, and as you know, Endeavor always promote the the development of the healthy entrepreneurs to 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 grow to a bigger businesses. With that, how do you see it from the ecosystem and as, as in the session here, adopting new financing modules, for example, if that is available? How do you see that from your point of view? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Shaif. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's a, I, I think you focus on really what Endeavor is about. What we do is we look at what we call a high impact entrepreneur. So they're entrepreneurs that are already on their way of growing. They're already established. They have a track record and we want to take them to become uh, large companies from the uh, SMEs that they, are, uh, that, that they are today. So we don't focus on startups. Um, we focus uh, more on the SME space. But what's very telling from what we say, because we are uh, downstream, 
uh, we get to see at the evolution of these companies, how they grow to that point and how the ecosystems grow with them. Um, Two years ago, three years ago, uh, we decided Endeavor is in 22 countries. So we also have, you know, we're blessed that we have a lot of the different comparison points to use. Three years ago, we did a study. We looked at Argentina and we said, how can Buenos Aires, which is uh, always capital of Argentina, be the tech capital of, uh, of Latin America? When Buenos Aires is, uh, there's a lot of corruption, the government's anti-business. Uh, it's uh, very difficult to take uh, money out of uh, Argentina. Uh, there's a huge brain drain problem in Argentina, but yet it became such a big tech hub with such a vibrant uh, ecosystem. We went back 10 years and we looked at how that ecosystem developed and we realized that around 96, 97, three, four companies were started. So we're talking 20 years ago, it's three, four companies uh, were started amount a, a handful of startups that uh, that existed back then that have grown and six seven years later eight years later as these companies matured and became uh, more important these entrepreneurs that were heading those companies started mentoring supporting uh, investing uh, 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 their uh, other entrepreneurs, people that used to work with them, they would encourage them to go and start a uh, business to the point where when we did the study uh, in 2013, over, let me get this right, I think over 87% or 88% of companies in Argentina uh, in, in the tech space were either directly, directly or indirectly uh, affected by these four uh, by these four entrepreneurs, three of them uh, being Endeavor entrepreneurs. So there's that, that. So from there, we created sort of the concept uh, that we call the multiplier effect, where companies, people that are successful, have a duty, like uh, Maher uh, was was saying, they have a duty to go back and pay it forward and uh, help other entrepreneurs and invest with them, use that experience they have uh, as entrepreneurs and help them uh, develop, just like. Tony has, uh, is, is doing in the, uh, in the Middle East. So then we said maybe Argentina is a uh, anomaly, maybe it's an outlier. So we looked at Turkey, we looked at Jordan, we looked at Colombia, and we had exactly the same thing. Today in Jordan, at the heart of the Jordanian eco ecosystem, other uh, than Maher, which to me fits uh, the definition of an entrepreneur, the way he goes and uh, the passion, uh, he goes about things and the passion he has, but Fadi Ghandur, Samih Tukan are uh, at the heart of that, uh, of that ecosystem. And so, it's, uh, so that's for us the uh, secret sauce, if you'd like, of the, uh, of the ecosystem. It's important to have access to finance. It's important to have ac access, to, uh, uh, access to markets. It's important to have entrepreneur-friendly uh, uh, laws. And no, the, the U.S. was built on the back of Chapter 11 uh, in Lebanon, you know, a country that I'm familiar with. If, uh, you, uh, if your business fails, you, you go to jail. If uh, your check bounces, you go to jail. So you need to overcome the uh, fear of uh, failing, which is a cultural, uh, uh, psychological, and legal fear in our part of the world. And that's, what, uh, and that's part of the help that that mentorship, those entrepreneurs that have succeeded, uh, help younger entrepreneurs with. And that's why you know, we view them as being at the heart of the uh, ecosystems that we see developing. Now with that, we'll come to the, what's called the jewel of mentorship in the Middle East. Somewhere there's a clicker. Yes, there is. <laughs> Over Somewhere here. A and there you go. So there's no need for me to introduce myself a second time around. But there are four main pillars within the ecosystem which we need to consider. There's the business environment and the environmental issues. There's access to finance. There's the infrastructure underlying entrepreneurship. And finally, there's human capital. So when I look at this picture, I would like you to reflect upon the following questions. Is it sensible to provide financial capital to entrepreneurs who do not have the required entrepreneurial and human capability? The answer is clearly no. But if you were an entrepreneur, and this is very specifically around the MENA region, would you establish a business 
in an environment where you can legally expropriate or diminish your assets and property rights when you are successful. Establish a business in an environment that is quasi-monopolistic or has significant barriers to entry. Start a business when the financial sector either cannot or does not respect and support your needs and pain points. Start a business in an environment where you can be wiped out through inadequate bankruptcy laws, as I just mentioned, or personal guarantees for all the financial facilities you have within your business. Establish a business in the society where failure is not tolerated, nor even celebrated, and where you run the risk of being a social outcast. Now, my purpose in asking these challenging questions, because all of these, by the way, are faced by entrepreneurs in the Middle East, was to highlight the requirement for balance. There's no point in getting one of the pillars right if you haven't got the other pillars with at least equal capability within each one. And do remember, as I said earlier, 80% of entrepreneurs, startup entrepreneurs, fail their first time around. So if we consider the various pillars and ask a few questions, starting with finance, if you go to 100 entrepreneurs and say to them, what is most needed from this ecosystem, I guarantee you that the majority of them will say finance, money. They're not going to say that I need to be developed. That's the first thing from their mind. They just want access to money. Similarly, if you ask financial intermediaries and banks, what they say when entrepreneurs come to them, they'll say, these entrepreneurs need finance. But by the way, put in a mechanism which takes us away from the risk so that they can develop a highly profitable business stream from this sector. And whilst we need to change the environment, and I'm talking here around about the society, the culture, this is going to take a long time to get through to the young entrepreneurs before we see any return on investment. So whilst it's very worthy and necessary, what are we going to do today to support the entrepreneurs who already exist and are in the marketplace to create jobs? We certainly need to improve the infrastructure for entrepreneurship, particularly around the legal frameworks and the policies. And this should be a real goal for the region. Although I'm saddened and I've been there a long time by the considerable lack of progress being made, particularly since the Arab Spring. But if the entrepreneur does not have the human or entrepreneurial capability, and Maha encapsulated that, investing in this balanced ecosystem will never provide you a return. And in this current wave of investment, if we don't get a return, what are the chances that we get further investment being pumped into the ecosystem? We need some success. Now, discussing human development is not easy and is a real challenge in the region. There's a very interesting MOOC, Mass Online Open Source Course, called Developing Entrepreneurship Ecosystems in Transitionary Countries. It was done by Cleveland University. It had a worldwide audience of 21,700 online on a session which was called Access to Finance and Access to Mentoring. There was no discussion on mentoring after the first 45 minutes. Because it's easy to talk about. Human capacity is very difficult to talk about. I understand we're doing two sessions, each, each of us. So my next session will be around about what do we need to do in the human capability area and what are the initiatives we're currently taking. So thank you for the first time. Now, here I come. راح ادوخ المترجم راح تصيد اكيد راح يجي له انفصام شخصيه لاني الان انا بتكلم بالعربي. Uh, now guys put your headsets head, head so you can hear me well. All right. Uh, can you put the uh, the slides?
I'll talk about, would you prefer Arabic or English? Uh, let's vote. Yeah, Arab or English? Uh, let's vote, vote. D democracy, guys, transparency, democracy. Arabic or English? Arabic. They are louder, so I can't. Okay. عندما نبحث على ما هي معوقات الايكو سيستم نجد النتائج ودائما نشوف النتائج ونروح على النتائج بدون ما نبحث عن عمق ما هي مشاكل البنيه او القضايا البنيويه في رياده الاعمال فنجد على سبيل المثال في السعوديه عدد المنشآت التي فيها شخص إلى أربعة أشخاص 84% إذا إحنا عندنا في السعودية مليون ونصف منشأة تجارية صناعية معناتها ما يقارب من 1.2 تقريبا مليون منشأة من واحد إلى أربعة عمال الأسوأ منها وهي هذه الشريحة وهذه الشريحة من دراسة أقامتها شركة بي سي جي معانا في السعوديه وكنت انا مشترك معاهم وهي بان احنا في السعوديه واؤكد لكم ان معظم دول الخليج نفس الشيء مستوى السعوديين العاملين في المنشات الصغيره هي اللي بالاحمر 0.45 مليون سعودي يعني اقل من نص مليون سعودي يعملون في مليون و200 الف منشاه وهذا عندما بحثنا عن عمق وجدنا أنها تمثل أقل بذلك كثيرا عموما ما أردنا أن نثبت وهو أن نحن في العالم العربي وخصوصا الخليج العربي وليس العالم العربي كله الخليج العربي أقل من المستويات العالمية فيما تسمى عدد العاملين في ريادة الأعمال أو المشاءات الصغيرة والمتوسطة هذا يجعلنا نفكر أين نذهب ماذا نعمل؟ فوجدنا بأن عندما بحثنا على كل القضايا البنيوية في ريادة الأعمال في المملكة العربية السعودية وجدنا ما يقارب من 38 مؤشر مؤشر يا مترجم indicator I have to uh, لأن مؤشر ممكن يقول لك signal أنا لأني أترجم فأنا عارف فوجدنا 38 مؤشر خطير في ريادة الأعمال في السعودية لما طلعناها فكفكناها ثم جمعناها إلى ما تسمى كلاسترز وجدنا بأن هناك خمسة كلاسترز واحدة منهم الفاينانسينج وأخطرها ما تسمى اللي هو اللي تكلم عليها اليوم الدكتور سعد البراك وهي قضايا الـ 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 الثقافة أو الكالتشر اللي هي يسمى الثقافة الاجتماعية لريادة الأعمال هذا أهمها كان لأن هذا شبه منعدم مثل ما قال قبل ذلك كان الزميل اللي كان هنا يتكلم عن قبل السيشن عندنا قال شيء قال أبهاتنا ما يطلعون رواد أعمال لما جيت فتحت أول بزنس في أمريكا عام 97 مرتي قالت لي لا تدخل نفسك في مشاكل راح تفش... راح تفلس تضيعنا في امريكا احنا في بلد غربه امي قالت لي ايش اللي يوديك يا ابني ما دام عندك وظيفه خليك في وظيفتك فقلت انا مش خسران شيء حبدا بزنس في امريكا امريكا فيها ترانسبيرنسي فيها ايزينس انا في نص يوم خلصت ال... ال... كل شيء يعني ولا قالوا لي ويجيب لنا دراسه جدوى وبدأت وتعلمت وخبطت وتعلمت لما تركت أمريكا بعت البزنس بما يقارب من 35 ألف دولار وما في مكتب ما في مكتب بس بعت البزنس كنتورك لما خلصت الدكتوراه فهذا يعطيني بأن ليست هناك بيئة لريادة الأعمال في العالم العربي وخصوصا الخليج العربي والقضايا اللي موجودة في السعودية قريبة جدا لقطر قريبة جدا للكويت مع اختلاف الصفات الاجتماعية الثقافية وننتقل بعدها إلى الجزء الثاني في محاضرتنا أو في السيشن تبعنا اليوم Now with our what's going on today with the ecosystem now we want to hear the audience here أشبعوا أو خلينا نقول energized and and they are so satisfied with hearing the problems. What are the solutions? We want to hear from you. 
what recommendations, solutions about what you think we can token into a recipe for healthy ecosystem in the Gulf, GCC. We, can we start with Andrea? Steve? Yes. Uh, it's always difficult to give uh, uh, recipes or to provide solutions, especially if you're not born in the country. Because huh? uh, again, as it was said, at the end of the day, entrepreneurship is very rooted uh, into the heart of people. So it's part of the culture of the place. But nevertheless, uh, you had a very nice exhibition outside the room. And I was going around and I saw an initiative uh, from Qatar Development Bank, uh, which is extremely, extremely interesting, and is this uh, uh, Lean Startup. Uh, uh, Lean Startup, it's, it's a novel approach, but I don't, I don't care about the approach. What is very important in Lean Startup is that it's designed for entrepreneurs who are doers. Uh, people that need to act. So Lean Startup say, guys, huh? the first thing is that you need to get in touch with clients. Huh? You don't need to waste time with defining the product. You just go with a minimum viable product. The few sketches that you need huh, to contact the clients, get in touch with the mar market, and start thinking at doing things. Huh? So if I have to give a suggestion, I would like to see more and more initiative like this one huh? that empower young people. Huh? My colleague here said we should trust youngster generation. I fully agree. Huh? I'm getting too old or even to say these kind of things. First thing, look at young people. Do things. Huh? Don't waste time to define the product go out and listen to the clients, and then, again, be ready to partner together and take risk together. If we don't share risk, we don't share success. Uh, we don't build up the future for our countries. Thank you, Andrea. Next, Yasmin. Yes, I'm going to go back to the um, very important student-led initiatives, young people leading initiatives. And I think it's very important for us to enhance our ecosystem by engaging with young people and understanding how are we going to do this. So our events that we do, the programs that we run, the workshops that we do should be targeted to these young people. So it shouldn't be formal. It should be cooler. It should interest them. They should be here. I should see lots of students here today. That, that's what is missing from our ecosystem right now, these kind of initiatives. And by changing that, we will allow more creative ideas to come out, more innovation to come out. Um, and that's where you see the most successful, innovative countries in the world, is where they are focusing on engaging with young, uh, young, young people. And at us, for example, at Bedaya Center, we work only with young, young entrepreneurs. Um, and the one thing that they absolutely hate, they absolutely hate, is filling out applications. They f filling out forms, they hate it. And everything here, and everything in this region, I'm from Bahrain, so it's the same in Bahrain. Everything in, in this region, you have to fill out forms if you want to do a loan, if you want to be incubated, if you want to see an advisor, you have to fill out applications. Take that away, take the bureaucracy away. The way we operate is an open door open door policy. You can walk in and you can literally come in and talk to us and we will talk to you face to face, kind of understand. And this is what more organizations should be working towards. And if I was to add one more thing, it would be to allow, allow startups to fail. We need to allow them to fail. We need to introduce a bankruptcy law in the country which allows them to fail and not get into a lot of trouble. Because if you do not allow them to fail, they will not take the risks. So it's again on the same point, they will not take those risks. Thank you. Exactly, allow them to fail. Now, but you cannot allow them to fail, Mr. Tarak, because you start with the healthy ones. Now, what do you recommend? 
Um, I think it's, uh, you know, as, as they say, failure is worth uh, four successes. You learn a lot from your, uh, from your failures. Um, look, I mean, obviously there's a lot of regulatory um, logistic uh, things that need to be put in place to allow uh, entrepreneurs to succeed. Uh, bankruptcy law, uh, fin uh, financing, uh, uh, allowing financing to be easier, allowing capital markets to uh, list companies faster as they, as the, as they grow. But I think fundamentally the more important part, uh, for at least for where, where I sit, what, where I think is that there's two uh, areas where we need to do more work in. And again, it's around the human capital. I think one, uh, the education institutions in the region uh, should uh, focus more on preparing people to become uh, active, positive uh, contributors to the workforce not just uh, go learn at university, not just be purely academic, an academic institution. And that's something across the region we, we suffer from. Um, so really prepare people to be more pro proactive, think about how they can add value to society, how to be able to grow. But the second point is, which will lead from that, is that this will stay with, with, with people so that once they go out of university and they work for a, for a few years someplace, get experience, hone their business uh, skills, four, five, six years down the road, then they become better entrepreneurs because they know what it takes to run businesses. They know what it means to be in a, uh, you know, how to manage their cash flow, how to look at market opportunities. They would have gotten that discipline that, uh, you know, my colleague uh, Maher uh, was talking about uh, before. Um, and, that's, and that's important. So it's getting people at the right time to start these companies. And it's something that we've seen in, uh, in, in Lebanon. Lebanese are known to be very uh, entrepreneurial, but really the most successful companies we see in Endeavor in Lebanon are companies not started by people that have just come out of university or worked for a year or two in university, but they're the people that have worked for uh, five, six years, seven years, then went off and created their own, uh, and, uh, their own company. And it's something that with uh, our office in uh, Saudi, we, we see the same thing. The most successful companies at Endeavor in Saudi are those where the, uh, entrepreneurs worked with, com uh, with companies for, for, no, for a few years, identified the opportunity they want to go after, and they go out after it with the right connections, with the right mentors, and uh, uh, with, with the right uh, capabilities in their hands. Now, with mentorship, as uh, Tarek has said, what's your recipe? Uh, and you got the best recipe, I think, for all of us, if we can claim the best. Yes, sure. Can we have the presentation again? Thank you. Are entrepreneurs created by nature, or are they created by nurture? And many people have different opinions. My opinion is around nurture. The first five years of a child and the way they are brought up in that five years has a dramatic impact upon, upon whether they will be entrepreneurs later on. So those first five years allow them to fail, to fall as uh, Mahab presented. And I just want to share some recent research which has not been published yet in the UK. It's around primary education. The key they found was two words, allowing the kids to have curiosity and skepticism. Those were the two key words that came out of it. And then when you go to secondary education and tertiary education, there were three main areas. The first one was to develop problem-solving capability at different levels. The second one was networking, and you've heard that now three times today while I've been here. And the third one was communication skills. But within mentoring, I want to introduce you to a piece of philosophy by Joseph Campbell called The Hero's Journey. And the gentleman from Silitech, I apologize earlier, said there's an interesting statistic that something like 14% of people in Qatar wanted to set up a business and only 3.5% did. So as we go around The Hero's Journey, just remember that. So you start off in the ordinary world, which is number one. 
you then go to the core to change, and that you will always find that 99% of the time you do not listen to that call. You neglect it. So you refuse it. And then you meet somebody who says, yes, you can do that. And because it's somebody you trust, you now listen to that person. That person typically, by the way, is a mentor in your life. So if you do not have somebody around you giving you that confidence, you will reject. And that's why I think only 3.5% go on to create a business. And then interesting, when you cross the line and you've formed your business, you're now under trial. You don't know if you're gonna succeed or fail. You now have to create a new network of friends, of support for you. And what's interesting is that some of your friends from the past are jealous of your taking the passion to go forward yourself, and they actually become enemies. And then you enter the fundamental area, which is this big, big storm. Imagine yourself as a startup entrepreneur, you've lost all your cash, you've mortgaged your house and you've not told your wife. Who do you talk to? It is absolutely critical that you have a mentor at that stage of your life to break you through it. And as said earlier, if you succeed, you learn a lot. If you fail, you'll learn even more. And then you go back into this new perspective of life to your new world. Now, having somebody on your journey is critical at all those phases. And if you listen to Maha, I'll share with you. I said to you, I've done 18 startups. Mowgli was my 19th. Why do I do it? Because it's in that storm where I get my learning in life. It's in that storm where I raise my own game as capability. But at each time I'm in that storm, I have a mentor with me who helps me. Now what we do in Mowgli, by the way, is train mentors, we've got a matchmaking process, and we support the relationship for the first year. It's absolutely critical that we help the entrepreneurs in the region through mentoring. Thank you. Now my turn. بعد طارق سويدان في محاضرة في عمان تقريبا الكل يعرف دكتور طارق سويدان هيز ا انسبيريشنال سبيكر هيز انسبيريشنال سبيكر قال كلمة كفاكم استعباد كان في لا يقل عن حوالي 400 طالب 500 طالب متخرجين من الجامعة قال بلاش استعباد زمان ال ال الاستعباد أو العبد الرق اللي هو العبد زمان يشتغل عند سيدة مالكة يقول له اصحى الساعة كذا نام الساعة كذا ودي هذا اقعد لا تروح تعالى احنا موظفين الحين كلنا موظفين لازم تكون الساعة سبعة ممنوع تطلع قبل الساعة خمسة أو قبل الساعة ثلاثة يعتمد على وقت الدوام وإذا طلعت لازم تأخذ إذن وإذا جيت توصل شيء لازم تتبع تعليمات سيدك اللي هو رئيسك في توصيل الشيء فقال كلمة كفاكم استعباد أنا ما قبلت إلا مرتين في حياتي فلذلك أخذت هذا الطريق إلى كفانة استعباد وبدأت أطبق في نفسي وتركت ما أعمله سابقا عشان كذا الدكتور عايشة نت تقول أنا ما زلت أخلي أقوله في ريادة فتركت ريادة وفكرت في شيء حبيت الانتبنورشيب لأني أنا كنت انتبنور قبل أبدأ العمل الوظيفي الحكومي فكيف أنا ما, ما أعمل بذلك فوجدت ريسيبي أو خلينا نقول طبخة لما يسمى a healthy ecosystem entrepreneurship in any country. Well, بحكم معيشتي في أمريكا حوالي 14 سنة دراستي عملي في السعودية احتكاكي مع دول الخليج وجدت هذه الرسبي وهذه الرسبي كل واحدة تترجم ال 38 وهي ما تحديات اللي موجودة 38 مؤشر أو initiative وتحدياتها موجودة. أول أول إشو اللي قالت الأستاذة ياسمين وهي Develop e-support systems. 
يجب أن يكون هناك an excellent e-support system على كل المجالات سواء البنية الداخلية للمنشأة اللي ت... اللي تعني بريادة الأعمال أو الفرونت فيسينج مع الكاستمرز في البرة هذه أول واحدة وهنا تدخل من models إلى 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 solutions إلى games إلى activities إلى uh, uh, templates على أساس تتطلع ما تسمى الشخص اللي فعلا يريد ان يدخل رياده الاعمال ولكنه خايف. الثانيه لوجيستيكال سبورت. اندفر يقدمون لوجيستيكال سبورت لكنه ناقص تكتين ثلاثه زي الاخوان المصريين لما يقولوا فضلوا تكه. طبعا الدكتور عمرو الان يزعل مني. توني هاز التكه الثانيه وهي المنتور لكن تعال إلى واحد عنده مشاكل في التسويق واحد عنده مشاكل في المبيعات واحد عنده مشاكل في التصريف واحد عنده مشاكل في التشبيك ما عندنا اللوجيستيكال سيستمز اللي يخدم الريادي في هذه الجزئيات كلها كشبكة متكاملة Enable infrastructure infrastructure واحدة ذكرتها أعتقد ياسمين أو طارق وهو الـ لا سوري نسيت وهي على سبيل المثال الانفراستراكشر للبلد لدعم رياده الاعمال وكل بلد لها خصوصيه في دعم رياده الاعمال السعوديه لها خصوصيه قريبه شويه من قطر بس قطر لها خصوصيه مختلفه عن السعوديه على سبيل المثال اعطيكم مثال واحد متشابه في كل ما عندنا قانون لان احنا دولنا في العالم الخليج العربي تعتمد على البترول في دخلها الوطني البترول اذا هو دخل الحكومه الحكومه تطرح المناقصات المناقصات تاتي الى الشركات الشركات تعطيها للشركات الصغيره ويبدا الى في هذا ما يسمى الاقتصاد بالازدهار وهذا هو اللي ماشي عندنا في دول الخليج العربي ما عندنا حاجه اسمها procurement سيستم للاسميز نظام ما في قطر حاولت قبل حوالي ثلاث سنوات قبل حوالي اربع سنوات الامارات بدات وخصوصا في اللي كنت اتكلم سابقا كانت اماره دبي ولكن البحرين عندها تقريبا 3% في البروكيرمنت سيستم لكن ما عندك نظام امريكا بس فقط اعطيكم مثال في امريكا الجي وزاره الدفاع الامريكيه ميزانيتها اقل من التريليون دولار بشويه 150 مليار 850 مليار دولار 25% of the procurement لازم يروح الى المنشات الصغيره والمتوسطه هذه على بلاطه اضرب انت الحسبه حسبه بدو احنا نسميها 850 مليار ضرب 25% كم يطلع للاسميز لو طبقنا بس 10% في دول الخليج العربي ايش حنعمل قطر 2020 الاولمبيك جيمز ايش حتعمل هذه Implement, implement quality systems وهذه للأسف احنا عندنا في العالم العربي ما عدا ما أراه في قطر وفي الإمارات هي دولتين نوعا ما اللي فيها الكواليتي تويكينج لكن في العالم العربي عندنا نلعب الكرة القدم وطقها والحقها نبدأ بطريقة يلا يلا عندنا خلنا نبدأ خلنا نبدأ عشان المسؤول الوزير يريد أن يرى ريزالت فلذلك الكواليتي عندنا دائما في مشاكل كثيره فلذلك ما في عندنا مبادرات صار لها اكثر من خمس سنوات كلها طيشه بيبسي انا اسميها بيبسي باب تخلص صحيح اي تريننج مانوالز وهنا مشكلتنا في العالم العربي ان احنا ناخذ وان سايز فيتس اول واذا اردنا ان نعمل ما تسمى اي تريننج مانوالز نبداها من الصفر ولا نستفيد من الغير ونقولبها على ثقافتنا. هذه هي الاي تريننج مانوال، اعطيكم مثال في رياده لما كنت انا اعمل كرئيس تنفيذي في رياده اخذنا أربعة اصدارات لنعمل دليل يتوافق مع الشخص في الجنوب في نجران بدوي في نجران. وشخص في القصيم يحسب الريال بالهللة وشخص سوري يا علي أنا مو بقصدي وشخص في عرعر يريد أن يستخدم أسقصر الطرق وأسهلها بغض النظر عن الفلوس 
طب كيف تعمل الطبقة هذه؟ فأخذنا أربعة إصدارات نعدل فيها الأدلة التدريبية الخاصة بريادة الأعمال لكي يخرج واحد مع ما تسمى دراسة جدوى هنا لما نقول إي تريننج مانوالز ويجب أن تكون إي وهذا نقطة ضعفنا في العالم العربي أمريكا لو دخلت في كل ولاية في الـ SBA Small Business Administration اللي هي وزارة المنشآت الصغيرة فكل ولاية لها هي... وزارة هناك وكل وزارة لها في المقاطعة كل مقاطعة تتميز عن الأخرى في كاليفورنيا تجد على سبيل المثال تميز في واحدة منهم حطت لك ماجلز على طريق الجيمز على طريق الكرتون هذا هو ما يقصنا في العالم العربي وفي الخليج العربي منتر ان educational سيستم واعتقد اشبع الاخ توني ماركتنج ان بي ار ما يمكن دبي الو... عفوا دبي الوحيده اللي سوت ايفنت ماركتنج للانتربرونورز ما عندنا ماركتنج للاور انتربرونورز وذا كامبين بحمله ما عندنا تشبيك بين الانتربرونورز بين الخليج العربي بعضهم البعض كنت اتكلم مع عبد الباسط الجناحي ليش ما نسويها يا عبد الباسط؟ انا عندي كانت صلاحيات وانت عندك صلاحيات خلينا نبدا ونجيب انت 100 انتربرونور وانا 100 انتربرونور نشبكهم اونلاين وبعد كذا ناخذ 25 25 نجمعهم مع بعض ونسوي كونفرنس ونبدا منها كايفنت على مستوى الخليج العربي لكن قلت له انا حطلع اعتقد ما اقدر ابداها لاني حطلع ساعتها من الرياضه هذا ما يسمى تشبيك عندنا واحده من الانتربرونورز من السعوديه لو عند حصلت هذا التشبيك كانت جت لان حتفتح لها فرص عمل جديده لان الاجتماعات اللي زي كذا اجتماعات تثري العقل والابتكار اكثر من انها تستمع فقط انوفيشن انوفيشن علم انوفيشن يبدا في الجامعات يبدأ في الثانويات الجامعات ما في إلا جامعتين يمكن في أكثر لأن تعرف إحنا بروفيسورز وريسيرشرز ما تقدر تقول تجزم الجامعات ما في إلا جامعة واحدة تقريبا في العالم العربي اللي تعتمد على الانوفيشن كسيستم في كل تخصص من التخصصات الدكتور ذكر اليوم بأن التخصص يعتمد على يركز على التخصص ولكن الانوفيشن في إدارة اسمها الانوفيشن والابتكار والريادة الأعمال لكن لو جعلت كل دكتور أو مدرس في الجامعة أن يضع ما تسمى 5% للابتكار وهيأخذ هذا الابتكار إلى مشروع ويعرض هذا المشروع على في لوحة القسم سنويا انظر ماذا سترى من الطلاب في الابتكار فتخيل الطالب يدرس ما يقارب من حوالي خمسة إلى ست مواد في فصل أربعة فصول هذه حوالي ثلاث من خمسة وعشرين إلى ثلاثين مادة ثلاثين مادة طلع ثلاثين ابتكار في أربع سنوات هنا لما أقول دعم ك كسيستم سيستماريك بروسس اللي هي ما تسمى مؤسساتي وليس مرة ثانية بيبسي باب آخر واحدة فاينانشال سستينابيلتي لما أقول فاينانشال سستينابيلتي إنه يكون هناك استدامة مالية لرائد الأعمال ندعمها بإنه هو يستطيع أن يحقق هذه الاستدامة بطريقة علمية وليس بطريقة أنه لما يخسر وهذه مشكلتنا في الخليج العربي لما يجي يخسر يمكن أستاذة ليلى واجهة الرياديات بدأوا يخسروا شوية أول ما تفكر أجيب قرض إضافي هذا أكبر خطر أكبر خطر أنا أقول لهم دائما أنت قاعد تحفر حفرة وقاعد في البحر وقاعد تحفر حفرة زيادة شكرا جزيلا Now we finished the session. I'm sorry, I was biased because I took more time than you guys. And uh, Tony, I know he wants to kill me now because he wants more than ta that time. <laughs> now, uh, we finished recommendations. We finished also the presentation of everyone what he thinks. Now we want to hear from you. What do you expect? What do you think? What do you want? Uh, what do you have? Do you have questions? Do you have recommendations? We want to hear it as recommendations or questions that lead to recommendations. عشان نوثقها ونحطها هنا عندنا في المؤتمر تطلع منها توصيات مثل مقال سعادة الوزير اليوم. دكتور عائشة. دكتور عائشة نتو هاي يا اي ونت تو ستارت ذا كويستشن اوكي جو اهيد جو اهيد ذن دكتور عائشة 
Uh, I want to start the question uh, emphasizing on uh, what uh, Mr. Saad al-Barak uh, said today at the end of his talk. Uh, without the entrepreneurial culture, the whole entrepreneurial ecosystem is ceremonial and symbolic. With that in mind, uh, my question is uh, to Mr. Uh, Tariq and uh, Yasmin. So how important, from Mr. Tariq's impo uh, experiences with uh, other countries, how important is co-working space uh, in, in this entrepreneurial culture? And uh, to Ms. Yasmin, like, uh, with, with, with the knowledge that Hayakab has started recently, why is it that we still don't have a, a really good uh, co-working space, especially for uh, when it comes to when we are trying uh, a lot to do in terms of uh, developing the entrepreneurial culture. Um, thank you. Because there's an echo, so we couldn't really hear exactly. Are you asking about the co-working space, why we don't have a co-working space in Qatar? No, first, uh, to Mr. Tariq, like how important is co-working space, how important is co -working space? for the entrepreneurial uh, culture? And to Ms. Yasmin, will, will we see a, a co-working space soon in the country? Okay. Uh, I think co-working spaces are, uh, are, are important. They're important to have because a lot of uh, information get, um, a lot of information and experience gets, uh, gets shared. People meet with each other, new ideas uh, spark up. But I think a lot, in a lot of cases where we've seen co-working spaces in the region uh, pop up, although they're a good way for companies to uh, limit their uh, costs at the, at the start, not a lot of them have strong programs to help create those uh, synergies be between them. So I'd say they are important, but what's more important is to create the dynamics internally to make it, uh, uh, to, you know, to help it foster creativity and, uh, and creation. And regarding whether or not we're going to see any co-working spaces here in Qatar, I think um, if you look at all the different coffee shops that we have, we can consider them as co-working spaces right now. Um, we've had a lot of startups come to our center and take a little space and work together. We do networking events where we've actually seen people link with each other and then find a place where they can work where they can come up with something. Do we have an official co-working space where you can legally register multiple businesses in one area? No. Will we have one? Yes. I think the, um, the way that it's going forward in Qatar is um, it's important to, have, uh, to make it easier for startups to operate. And I think the government understands that, the country understands that, and there will be new laws, regulations, hopefully coming up in the near future that will allow new and, um, and young startups to work together legally. But it hasn't stopped you know, other people right now. You can find them in many different areas. I've seen them in universities, um, in Education uh, City, I've seen them in the centers there, and I've seen them in the coffee shop opposite our office. Yeah. Next, Dr. Asha. So, Ali Yasmin, and the organization is written on it that it is a business. So, do you help some of the business? And do you just help some of the business? And if it is some of the business, I know what the business is. احنا كمركز بدايه مكتوب مركز بدايه لرياده الاعمال والتطوير المهني فعندنا قسمين عندنا قسم مختص في رياده الاعمال اللي احنا نساعد الشباب في قطر اللي عندهم مثلا فكره في اي مهنه في اي اندستري يعني مو باندستري سبيسيفيك وفي نفس الوقت لان احنا نساعد الشباب بصوره عامه عندنا جزء للتطوير المهني um, ففي كثير مثلا من الطلاب طالبات ما يعرفون um, شو المهنة اللي هي أو أي تخصص يدشون فيه فممكن يجون عندنا وعندنا مستشارين نساعدهم في هالموضوع. Uh, السلام عليكم. هنا. Where's the microphone here? All right, we have this. Uh, your name? محمد عيسى. محمد. And then we have the female here in the back. Next one. Oh, here. I'm sorry. Then the female, please. Oh. Okay. Um, 
actually one of the challenges that um, you were mentioning about that, that mostly pays uh, entrepreneurs is the financial, is raising funds, is having enough financials that may uh, allow them to launch their entrepreneurial venture. The question is, what do you think about the social entrepreneurship approach in using crowdsourcing technologies to raise funds, to raise collaboration, to create the service? For example, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, which is uh, seven times bigger than the biggest uh, than Britannica encyclopedia. It is basically a crowdsourcing initiative that led to the creation of the biggest encyclopedia in human history. So do you think that social entrepreneurial approaches surrounded about, around using crowdsourcing technologies will, over, will help entrepreneurs to overcome financial constraints since they are engaging bigger communities and uh, getting the collaboration of others to create their service and to whoever want. Yeah, just a very quick and fast reaction. Uh, I said in the next future the ecosystem will be totally different as we know it now. Why? Because this kind of new things like crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, uh, will come up. Uh, and they will provide an entrepreneur with amazing opportunities. Because they will, let's say, uh, disarticulate uh, the person with the space, with the place, and we allow him to get in touch with, let's say, the globe, uh, with the crowd. And this is very, very important. And what will matter more and more, as it was said before, is going to be the passion and the commitment of the people. Huh? Access to finance, access to mentorship, access to markets huh? will only depend huh, by the passion and commitment of the person. Because these new technologies will allow everybody, no matter where he, is, he was born, to access the right resource. Will it be money or knowledge? Anybody else? All right, Tarek. Yeah, actually, just uh, to, to add on what Andrea was saying, and, and I agree with him, I think uh, another added benefit of crowdsourcing is that we're seeing uh, simpler term sheets, lower valuations as well for, for startups. So there's del less dilution at the early stage than uh, the entrepreneurs are getting with traditional VCs that are doing seed, seed, level, inv uh, seed level investments. Um, I think also you're seeing a uh, democratization of the venture capital model as well because the venture capital industry is going through a crisis uh, uh, globally. They've raised a lot of money, that's pushed a lot of uh, valuations up, so there's a lot of thinking about how to make it uh, more efficient. And definitely crowdsourcing and uh, platforms such as AngelList are making a big, uh, a big difference. So I think that's the way that we're gonna be uh, going, which is better for the uh, entrepreneur, so because it makes it more transparent and makes it more, um, uh, makes it fairer and more competitive uh, for the entrepreneur to get that uh, the, to, to get to get that money from the, those uh, from those founders. The uh, other side of it is that you, the entrepreneur will be getting less support from the investors at that early stage than they would get with VCs, and this is where. Uh, mentorship and support from other organizations such as Endeavor, Mowgli, so on and so forth uh, plays uh, a very important role. Next question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ma'akum mubarak al-marri. Sahibat shirka nasha min rawad al-a'mal fi Qatar. Awal shay, bas fi mulahada Dr. Sharif, idha bas ashan al-tawsiya اللي يخرج بها هذا المؤتمر احنا في قطر بالنسبة لدور وزارة الاقتصاد والتجارة احنا كرواد اعمال هناك بعض الاجراءات اللي تكون صعبة لنا وغير منطقية في عالم التكنولوجيا في عالم الحكومة الالكترونية مثال عندما نبدأ 
تجديد السجل للشركة لا يعطونا إلا سنة والسنة هذه طبعا يؤخذ منها شهرين في إجراء التجديد فبمعنى يعني أصفالك ثمان شهور فالسنة تبدأ تنتهي يعني بسرعة وهذا معروف لماذا لا نعطى فرصة بدل ما إحنا نضيع الوقت في تجديد السجل كل سنة ورسوم وهذا صعوبة لنا لأن أصلا إجراءاته مش سهلة ليش مش سهلة؟ لأنك لما أنت تأخذ من الجهات المعنية ترخيص بممارسة العمل بمعنى أنا شركتي مثلا مختصة بتنظيم المؤتمرات والمعارض لازم أخذ من هيئة السياحة ترخيص لممارسة النشاط بناء عليه راح أعطى السجل وممارسة النشاط رسميا لكن كل سنة أبدأ الموال من جد وجديد أروح لهيئة السياحة أطلب منها إعادة تجديد الترخيص للنشاط ثم أروح أسلم مرة ثانية لسجل التجارة لإدارة الاقتصاد عشان تعطيني السجل ليش أبدأ؟ مدام من البداية خذيت موافقة الجهة لممارسة النشاط يكفيني بس تجديد السجل إذا السنة غير كافية بالإضافة إلى من التوصيات التي نرغب فيها غرفة التجارة اللي شعارها بالخلف إحنا ندفع رسوم لها لكن هي الصراحة مغيبة لا ندري ماذا يوجد من داتا ممكن تساعدنا لا ندعى إلى مؤتمرات لا ندعى إلى منتديات إحنا مهمشين التركيز على رجال الأعمال العمالقة في مجال البزنس هذا بالنسبة لبعض التوصيات اللي تخص قطر تحديدا في مجال اللي هي وزارة الاقتصاد والتجارة إحنا نعاني منها كرواد أعمال وغرفة التجارة أيضا دورها يعني يعتبر في الخمسينات ما لها دور صح ما احترامي للي موجودين فيها بالنسبة للدكتور شريف بعد أنا عندي موضوع بالنسبة للتشبيك مع رواد الأعمال اللي سواء في المجتمع القطري مع الخليجي وأيضا العربي لي تجربة قبل أسبوع في تركيا التقيت مع بعض الرجال الأعمال بتركيا وبعضهم عرب أصول عربية لكن أتراك وبعضهم أتراك معملين بس على التليفون منتدى وضيفين وضف جيتهم ضفوني معهم فعلى طول جيني أبديت من إيطاليا من تركيا من فلسطين من لبنان من مصر من ليبيا من الجزائر من الخليج ليش إحنا ما نعمل نفس الشيء أنا بشد على إيدك ويمكن نبدأ يا دكتور شريف نعمل هالمنتدى مع بعض هذا مهم جدا لنا يعني إحنا سعداء بالمؤتمر لكن يهمنا أن إحنا نلتقي بأقراننا بأشباهنا في المؤتمرات هذه أيضا ياسمين ممكن يليت تكون في مبادرة من أنا عارفة أن ما شاء الله بداية لها يعني مساهمات جميلة جدا وخاصة في دعم رواد الأعمال لكن لو كان في ملتقى بس يجمعنا إحنا كشركات نتعرف على بعض ويكون لأن أنا كشركة ليس هناك تنافس هناك تكامل يعني أنا شركة قد تكون هناك شركة تنظيم معتمرات لكن أنا أستفيد منها وهي تستفيد مني فنحن نكمل بعضنا البعض وليس هناك تنافس انفرادي فشكرا لكل المواضيع اللي طرحتوها مهمة جدا وأتمنى اللي هو الدكتور شريف جدا عجبني طرحك وحابة يعني إذا كان في على المستوى طبعا أعلى من مستوانا أن يكون في آلية تنفيذ هذه الآلية صحيح صحيح. شكرا طبعا الاليه الاليه تعت... هي موجوده ولكن تعتمد من من مدينه لاخرى ومن دوله لاخرى لان لو جبت الاليه اللي انا سويتها في السعوديه ربما لا تنجح هنا اعطيك مثال من الاليات اللي لم تنجح في قطر شل المبادره شل انطلاقه لم تستمر في قطر وغيرت شل انطلاقه الى برنامج اخر على سبيل المثال لا يجب لها كل جزئيه لازم لها تويكن اللي هي التكات هذه اللي انا كنت اقولها Next question, last question. لحظة لو لو تسمح بس بس بغيت أقول إن إحنا في مركز بداية عندنا ملتقى شهري لرواد الأعمال نقدمها كل ثاني أحد من كل شهر. فيعني تاريخ ثمانية مارش بيكون الملتقى الثاني نقدمها في كتارة. فلو حابتين هاي عبارة عن مكان تلتقين مع 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 رواد أعمال مع المستشارين مع كل ونقدم في نفس الوقت استشارات إذا حابة فالأستاذة ريم السويدي مدير العام للمركز بداية موجودة فلو حابة تأخذين من عندها بعض المعلومات وإن شاء الله نشوفك يوم الأحد السلام عليكم مدرمي ستاهر أحمد 
and uh, my question is like we all talk about uh, startups and uh, we are saying that we need to allow to fail my question is uh, when we fail and when we restart what uh, all are the measures or the how differently we need to look into the ecosystem because uh, from the ecosystem we failed once and we are restarting with our idea with passion and motivation so in that scenario how differently we need to look into the ecosystem thank you to who you would like to face the uh, question general general who would like to answer yeah can you can you rephrase the question, get the mic a little bit far away so the All ecosystem, right. because the problem with the ecosystem, nobody heard it. Okay, let me repeat. Uh, when, uh, when we fail with our startup, when we fail with our startup and we are restarting our idea again, we are coming back to the business, uh, then at that time, how differently we need to look into the ecosystem? Am I clear? How differently with the, what, how differently we need to look into the ecosystem. Are you clear? So uh, I can give you a very simple answer. I never invest in an entrepreneur who's not failed. Full stop. You want, let me answer. There is an old saying in Najd area, and we always say it. Najd means the central of Saudi Arabia. There is a very old proverb. If a son comes to his father, or he goes to his uncle, which is like an elder wise, and he wants to start a business, they will say like this. This means five you must fail five times to be able to succeed. So, so my question is, I fail many times, and when I come back, uh, what all are the measures or how differently I need to study my ecosystem? The wise people should look at you more valuable than the, uh, the, what's called the unwise people. This is my perception. Anybody else was, would like to add? Just a final comment. Unfortunately, not all of us are that wise. Don't worry, remember Einstein and remember Newton. Don't worry. All right? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much to the, all the listeners and the audience, uh, males and females, his, ex her, his excellencies. And thank you, Amina. Thank you, Mr. Shuhayb. Uh, uh, Shuhayb. I always make mistakes with the, the name. I know. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And I would like to uh, thank the, uh, uh, the person who introduced us. Thank you. And we are all yours. Thank you. Shukran, Dr. Sharif Abdel Wahab, Sayyid Andrea Dian Salmo, Sayyid Tony Bori, Sayyid Tariq Saadi, and Sayyida Yasmin Hassan. حضورنا الكريم شكرا على حسن الإصغاء وملتقانا غدا في تمام الساعة التاسعة صباحا لاستكمال جدول الملتقى الثاني لدور ريادة الأعمال في التنمية الاقتصادية أتمنى لكم أمسية سعيدة شكرا وإلى اللقاء